The firm is a super group that started with a friendship. Jimmy Page and Paul Rogers have known each other for years. And when Led Zeppelin started their swan song label in 1974, Rogers Group Bad Company was the first act they signed. We used to sort of bump into each other in the office quite a bit. And then uh, if we were ever both out touring, you know, the two groups, Zeppelin and Bad Company, we would um, perhaps go to their gigs, you know, and sometimes they'd come to ours. By the mid-80s, both bands had broken up, and Page and Rogers went their separate ways. But their reunion on the Arms Tour in 1983 ignited their hopes for a long-term partnership. I called up Paul because we had got together and, and played a little bit at Paul's house just to have a play together, you know. And I said, would you, you know, would you like to come over and do this thing? I fancy the idea of working with Jim. And also, you see, you never know where it's going to take you. I think that's the, uh, the exciting thing, because you go into it with a good feeling that, um, that uh, you're going to go in new musical directions, but you're, you don't really know where. So you sort of like uh, keep yourself open to all the possibilities. And uh, I, I think that's the goal, you see, to go in there and, and see what you can do. such a, a good uh, group of musicians who, okay, they've done it all before, uh, you know, Jimmy and Paul have, but it doesn't come across like that. They're doing it because they, they want to do it and uh, to be part of such a good team is tremendous. Oh, it's a great opportunity actually to work with, uh, with both uh, Paul and Jimmy because uh, Paul's actually been uh, probably my favourite singer, I think, uh, for years, ever since Free, um, and all that time, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity to work with great musicians. Page and Rogers formed the firm with Chris Slade and Tony Franklin. And in February of 1985, they released their debut album and their first single, Radioactive. The, the obvious single from the album was Radioactive, without any doubt, you know, it was really infectious from the start. I don't really know what it means myself, because it was just off the top of my head without a, lot of, a great deal of thought. You know, I didn't sit down and and sort of uh, try and do anything serious. But it is, does seem to be a play on words between, you know, radioactive and d -d 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 radioactive.
Paul and I basically put, put this thing together as a vehicle to be able to go out and, uh, and tour, you see. It was all new material, actually, basically. Uh, we, tr we decided to try and steer clear of the, the old hit syndrome. We'd sort of got a set together and we didn't know whether it would work at all in front of an audience, you know. But we wanted really to, um, to see how it would be if we played all this fresh material and, and just see what the reaction was. And it was good. You know, I know what you see. It will be the same for me. I know you know what I hear. Sometimes it's so very clear. And if you can get through a two-hour set without people booing you off or shouting for seven and stuff, you know, or, or bad company stuff or free stuff, you, 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 you know, it's, it's good. At least you've... You've arrested them. You've arrested them to a point, you know. For both Jimmy Page and Paul Rogers, the firm is their first experience making videos on a regular basis. Yeah, I think we wanted to present ourselves to the people, to the club, you know, to everyone, as the way we are, you know, because they hadn't seen the group at all. But now, now that we've that's been out and we've done a tour, and people have a little bit of an idea of what we're about. Um, this is going to be a little bit more imaginative, you know, a bit more of a sort of story around the song and things like that, you know. I was getting nervous about doing videos because I'm hardly like instant actor like most of these kids in the new groups are, but yeah, no, no it's, it's, it's fun, it's, it's been good actually. And the firm is real sophisticated rock, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very developed. I thought that uh, because the roots of the firm is, is very, it's really rooted in the blues in a way, and because of the, the song has got a real sensual, slow quality to it, so I thought that putting it in a, in a Louisiana Bayou type setting would, would bring it alive, would help, would, uh, would be the right look for the song. Well, it's so sleazy I could live in there. <laughs> really? No, no, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a perfect set. I mean, yeah, I think it's great, actually. It's, it's very effective. And there's four different settings besides the main blues club back there which we're calling Les's Place in honor of Les Paul, who plays the bartender. You know, it's just really weird because we've done this in the last couple of days and it's all been a bit of a rush. So I'll tell you the truth, we don't quite know what's happening. Uh, and we're about to find out. That's, all we know is we don't to pretend to be time. playing when we're not. <laughs> which is what videos are about, isn't it? <laughs> Now you tell me 
One thing about the second LP is I think that every every song is very very strong on the album. You're happy. I don't with usually it. say things like that. <laughs> no, it's called Mean Business, right? Yeah. Why? Well, why not? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a pun, you know. It's a pun. I mean, is it? In t tell me what you think it implies. I mean, in, in terms of right, we're getting this well, is the second album. Well, they're not messing around, are they? I mean, I'll leave it to all the press to say they mean business, you know, this is business, but it's, it's the other aspect. For you, it means music business. Meaning well, business I, think, about I, hope, I hope that, you know, from, from what we did before, uh, from, from the first tours that we did in the States, as, 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 um, as rough and ready as it may have been, I think people would appreciate that we did mean business, and we certainly do now. The videos from the new album mean business too and the three of them will be linked together as a trilogy. They're linked by our story. And, of course, knowing this in the beginning, uh, I've deliberately set the story so that we can link everything together and it has a coherent and cohesive pattern to it. This isn't as difficult as it sounds, actually. <laughs> we agreed right at the outset not to have them acting, but have them mainly in performance. I can't mind the solo because they're, they're always different, and I can't remember what I did, you know? I mean, I, I, they're always different, they're always different, and it's very difficult, you know, you feel stupid that you can't just hear it and remember it and, and, and mind it, but I can't, you know? I don't play like that.
they, I think, wanted something that was reflected the music. And this new album has a lot of confidence, a lot of upfrontness. And so I worked on that, really, and gave them something that was completely different from anything that anybody else had done before, and something that was totally new for them. The next clip in this series is All the King's Horses. Well, when I first heard the music, um, I felt that the, the lyrics and the sound had a very majestic feel to it. So I decided uh, to write a script that was related to that, that was intercut on a 50-50 basis or 40-60 basis with the band. The best thing to do with all of these things is to base it on the lyrics, really, I think, and we've, we've done that. It's, a, it's really, it's... Um, it's a sort of uh, love story about a, ta a ta forbidden love, a taboo love. Um, not to give too much away, though. And we've, we've worked it around that, you know. Yeah. 
Live in Peace is the climax of the whole trilogy. And it's an interesting trick because it's a series of individual stories which are all related to uh, feeling about Armageddon. That was a number that was um, featured when we first um, went went to America on our first tour, even in Europe on our first tour. It was a number from Paul's solo LP. It had to be recorded again with this band, for sure. You know, because everyone, you know, we, we all loved it as a number so much, you know. And, uh, and it had grown so much from the early days, you know. We have uh, a sequence in Russia, which is Lenin's tomb. We have a sequence in Hong Kong, which is a children's playground on a rooftop. We have a sequence in the Peruvian jungle, um, bird constrictors, monkeys, etc. Uh, we have a sequence which is a terraced street, Victorian street in London. And the last sequence uh, is a New York uh, scene in downtown. The sort of moral in the story of Living Peace is it's just a very simple statement of fact, really. That it, looking around the world, it seems to me very, very strange that we can't live in peace, you know. And, and, and it's, um, it's the simplest way I could express it.
we came out really to sort of test the water, you know, and it's the reaction and everything's been great. And uh, consequently, you know, the, the playing improves all the time, so, so the band's getting better and sounding better, and it's just building all the time. Everyone's sort of uh, working together towards the, you know, the common end of it, which is to, to really do some damn good music, which uh, is going to sort of touch people's hearts and. Uh, and uh, that's that, really.